Parker alapjáró az észak-amerikai partoknál fölényes győzelmet The news that flowed to Canada in the first three years of the war was generally bad and often worse. Each evening, while this news was monitored, the country settled by its radios for a grim ritual. They waited for the man they called the Voice of Doom to intone the defeats and disasters of the day. Finally, in the fall of 1942, there was a new high note in this voice of Lorne Green. This is the National News Bulletin, a summary of the day's news. The largest Canadian convoy of the war has reached Britain. Another German city has been blasted by the RAF Bomber Command. There are reports of a great naval battle in the South Pacific. Dramatically, in a few short months, and on all the battlefronts, the tides of war were turning. The Americans were striking back in the Pacific. The Marines were landing at Guadalcanal in the Solomons. On this island, so remote that no accurate map existed, they began their journey through a hundred jungles to Japan. In Russia, the German invader was being stopped and surrounded at Stalingrad. On 330,000 Axis soldiers, the Russians closed the trap. The Germans had come a thousand miles, and now, all along the front, they were starting back. Montgomery struck out at Rommel from Alamein. In two weeks, his 8th Army had split Rommel's forces and sent them in full retreat across the North African desert. In hurricanes and spitfires, Canadian pilots, they raked the enemy as he ran to the west. Ships of the Canadian Navy, escorts for another Allied army, now landing on the shores of Morocco. They would meet Montgomery in Tunisia and squeeze the Axis from Africa. Every schoolboy had now heard of Ike. It is January 1943. At Casablanca, the leaders sit in the sun and study the fortress of Europe. In Berlin, Joseph Goebbels is trying to celebrate a Nazi anniversary. But there are visitors. A raid of little military significance, but Goebbels, the propaganda master, must have admired the touch. The end of the beginning, but still much fighting ahead, and a new formation to help. On New Year's Day, 43, eight RCAF squadrons came together as number six bomber group. The days of hit and miss were ending. New techniques, new instruments, new explosives, new planes had made it a precise, if still dangerous, art. It was now practiced almost every night, with the Canadians of six group and the Pathfinder squadron in the thick of the raids.
called this their milk run. And this, the Happy Valley. It was the Ruhr, industrial heart of Germany. silently in the crashing sky, each expert at his job. Now the intercom silence could be broken. Give her to Nav. Give us a heading, Charlie. Heading South 180. Roger, Dodger, Charlie. Okay, boys, let's get the hell out of here. Germany blazed below. The bombers turned from the dawn. They fought a strange and nervy war, these flying men. Each morning they would try to shake the sickening knowledge that some were not there. Through the day they would unwind in the lovely rolling country of North England. Then towards evening, the nerves would draw tight again. One summer night in 43, they got ready for a single target of vital significance, Pinamunda on the Baltic. Intelligence had revealed a testing station for two strange and secret weapons. The buzz bomb and the rocket, B-1 and B-2. In 45 minutes, 525 heavy bombers set back production a crucial two months. Other targets house a far from secret weapon. The U-boat pens at Brest, Lorient, and Saint-Nazaire. went in here too, but with little success. There was no explosive that could dent the 12 feet of concrete protecting the German submarine. This menace must be met and beaten at sea. Hitler now knew his salvation could only lie with the U-boat. 